Uh, we're talking about hope, and, and hope obviously does not appear in the fruit of the Spirit passage, Galatians chapter 5, and uh, verses 22 and so on and so forth. Uh, however, this is one of these things that I believe that every Christian, every follower of Jesus, should have in his or her life. We should all have hope. How many of you have hope this morning? How many of you walked in this morning thinking, man, I need some hope? <laughs> All right, good. There's a story about a man who walked upon a Little League uh, baseball game one day, and uh, there was one of, the, one of the player, one of the boys was kind of leaning against the fence, and the man went up, walked up to the boy and he says, uh, how are things going? What's the score? The little boy says, well, it's 18 to nothing. We're behind. Well, the man says to him, well, I bet you feel pretty discouraged, don't you? And the little boy says, well, not really. Uh, and the man's like, well, why not? And he says, well, we haven't been up to bat yet. <clears throat> That's hope. That's hope, being down 18 to nothing and saying, that's all right, we still got a chance to bat. How many of you would like to have that kind of hope in your life? I, I think I would, you know, just be that optimistic about how things are going to go. Um, and, and, and uh, you know, so throughout our lives, we've, we've hoped for many different things. We've hoped to get that job we wanted. We hope to have enough money when we retire. We hope to have the money we need to pay the bills and buy groceries. We hope we feel better tomorrow. Some of you are probably thinking right now, I hope this sermon isn't very long today. I've got to roast in the oven. I've got to get home and eat, right? So we hope for all these things, and I think we toss around this word hope pretty regularly, and sometimes I think without much certainty. You know what I mean? We, we might hope for something to happen, but we're not really sure whether or not our hopes will actually come to fruition or ever be realized. We hope for better tomorrows. We hope circumstances change. We hope we can get our, our act together. And so we live life kind of hoping for the best, but really not sure that these things will ever come to light, will ever come true. So what is that one thing you're really hoping for today? What is that one thing that you really hope comes true? Are you certain about it? Are you, are you like, yeah, I'm, I'm sure this is going to happen? Or are you kind of going back and, man, I just, I don't know. Well, I want to I want to give you a, a, a three things this morning, three places where we can find this hope, because hope is essential, I think, to our survival. It's essential to, uh, to live our lives with hope, because a person without hope, I think, is a, is a person without purpose. What are you living for if you don't have hope? And so you may find yourself this morning, maybe you did walk in this morning kind of depressed, kind of down kind of despaired because all the hope that you could muster up this week, it was tossed out the window. It was buried deep within you. And, and maybe you came this morning hoping to go home with a little more hope. So where do you hope? Where do you find hope? When you don't get the job, when you don't have the money, when your loved one doesn't get healthier, when your situations don't change, when you feel alone and afraid. How do we deal with the hardships and struggles that life throws at us? In Hebrews chapter 6, we find uh, some very encouraging words, I think, and I hope, hope that you find them as encouraging uh, uh, to you as they are to me. Verses 18 and 19, Hebrews chapter 6, they say this. So God has given us both His promise and His oath. These two things are unchangeable because it is impossible for God to lie. Therefore, we who have fled to Him for refuge can have great confidence as we hold to the hope that lies before us. This hope is a strong and trustworthy anchor for our souls. It leads us through the curtain into God's inner sanctuary. When all of life seems to have come crashing down around you, it's fallen apart, and you think you can't, you just can't handle another storm in your life, we have this anchor that holds us steady that holds us secure, that keeps us safe, and that keeps us sure from sinking. That's an anchor's job. Keep us safe, secure, keep us from sinking, and keep us kind of steady. We have an anchor that helps us cope with the hardships and struggles of life. We may feel helpless, but we don't have to feel hopeless. We may go through life thinking, man, I need some help here, and maybe, maybe I'm helpless, but we can never lose 
hope. No matter what hand life deals me, no matter what, no matter, uh, what does or doesn't happen to me, no matter who likes me or doesn't like me, I can have hope because my hope is not dependent upon these things of life, income, circumstances, health, situations, um, and other people. Our hope is sure and safe and secure in, in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So you're down 18 to nothing, <laughs> but you have yet to bat. You have yet to bat. Where do we find true and lasting hope? I'm going to give you three areas this morning. First of all, you can find true and lasting hope in the person of God, in who He is, in the person of God. We can find true and lasting hope in the person of God, of the God who never changes. Hebrews 13, 18, God is the same today, yesterday, and forever. He never changes, and that is amazing. Oh, but you go through life and you think, you know what, nobody knows the struggles I'm going through. Nobody knows the pain I'm having as, I'm, as, as my husband and I or wife and I are fighting. You might think that nobody knows the struggles you're going through to break a, a bad habit. You, you might think that nobody knows the depression and the fear that you face day in and day out, but I want to tell you this morning, God knows. God knows what you're going through, and God is great. God is great because He knows all about me, and He knows all about my situation. He knows. In Psalm 56 and verse 8, prayer to the Lord, it says, You keep track of all my sorrows. You have collected all my tears in your bottle. You have recorded each one in your book. Isn't that amazing? God knows what you're going through. He knows you up close and personal so well that he keeps a record every time your, your heart is broken. He keeps record of when you're feeling lonely and down and depressed. He keeps a record of every tear that drips from your eyes. He's writing it down. He knows what you're going through. He's recorded every heartache and every failure and every little thing that comes your way and you just feel maybe just a little broken. God knows and records it and he keeps track of it. You might think, you might go through life and you think, nobody else cares. Nobody else is asking me about how I'm doing or what's going on in my life. You might think that nobody cares in your life, but nothing Nothing at all escapes God's notice. He knows what you're going through. I love that uh, song. We didn't sing it this morning. Sorry, worship team, we should have done this one. But that, that, that song, that praise chorus, He knows my name. He knows my every thought. He sees each tear that falls. And He hears me when I call. It's amazing. God knows. God is great. He knows all about me and my situation, but God is also good because He cares about me and my situation. He cares what's going on in your life. He just doesn't sit back and record it down and say, oh, yep, yep, going through it again. He goes, man, I want to do something about this. I care about this. Psalm 31 and verse 7 says, I will be glad and rejoice in your unfailing love, for you have seen my troubles and you care about the anguish of my soul. Maybe you came in this morning feeling a little bit anguished. You feel sorrowful. You feel sad. And, 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 and God isn't just keeping record of that sadness. He cares about that sadness. He cares about you and what you're going through. Psalm 103, verses 13 and 14, it says, The Lord is like a father to his children. What an image. He's tender and compassionate to those who fear him. For he knows how weak we are. He remembers we are only dust. God knows how weak we are. He, he knows that we're not perfect. He, he knows us so well. He knows every little imperfection better than anyone else in our lives know them. Isn't that amazing? And what's his response? All these imperfections come up, they creep out, out of our lives. And what's his response? Does he judge us? No. D does, he, does he punish us for these imperfections? No. Is he angry at us because of these imperfections? No. It says that he is tenderhearted and compassionate like a father. 
He wants to restore us. That's the kind of God He is. He loves you with an unconditional kind of love. A love that's it's not based on your performance. He loves you anyway. It doesn't matter how good you are. It doesn't matter how bad you are. He loves you no matter what. And God is so great that He knows all about you and your circumstances and He knows and He's so good that He cares about you and your situation and He wants to do something about it. He does. You can find true and lasting hope in the person of God. Second, you can find true and lasting hope in the power of God. In the power of God. He knows your situation. He cares about your situation. The best news of all is that He's got the power to change both you and your situation. Isn't that amazing? Like sometimes we go through things in life and, and really we find out it is we who need changing. Have you ever been there? Like, man, my situation is terrible. It, it stinks. But maybe I'm the one who needs to change. And so God has the power to do that. Or maybe sometimes we go through life and we look at our situation and go, you know what, I'm a good person, I'm okay, but man, my situation is terrible. God has the power to deal with that and change it. And sometimes he has the power to change both you and your situation. I love this passage from Ephesians chapter 1. Paul writes, I pray that your hearts will be flooded with light so that you can understand what? The confident hope. There's that word hope. The confident hope that he has given to those he called. His holy people, that's you and I, who are his rich and glorious inheritance. Isn't that amazing? We talk about how we're the masterpiece, the workmanship of God, but we are his rich and glorious inheritance. Then then Paul writes, I also pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of what? Say it out loud. God's power. He wants us to understand God's power for us who believe him. And then get this. This is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead and seated him in the place of honor at God's right hand in the heavenly realms. See how much power lives within you and I, you and me? Uh, The same power that rose Jesus from the grave lives inside of us. We have that power if we're followers of Jesus Christ. We have that within us. Whatever you're going through in this life right now, maybe you feel like that hope that you once had is buried deep in your soul and there's no way it can be resurrected. You might feel that way sometimes, but just as God's power raised Jesus back to life, God's power, that same power, can reach deep within your soul and raise your buried hope back to life. Isn't that a wonderful promise? Man, I should hear some amens. Well, I'm excited about that. Yeah. That's the kind of power you and I have that God has given us. We can find this hope buried deep within our souls. And like I said, sometimes this great power, it changes you. Sometimes this great power changes your situation. Sometimes this great power changes both you and your situation. And that's amazing. And I want you to think about this. This hope, that we're talking about this morning. It's not this some wishful thinking kind of hope. You know that hope that we think of with uncertainty, like maybe it'll happen, maybe it won't. This is the kind of hope we can be certain about. It's not idealistic optimism. It's something that we can be certain about. The hope that you and I have in Christ is our anchor that gives us confident assurance. Hebrews 11.1 You might remember this when you were younger. One of these verses we memorized. It says that now faith is confidence in in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. We have this confident assurance that no matter how we feel, no matter what we experience, no matter what we see, no matter what we go through in life, God knows what is happening and He cares about us and He has the power to change both us and our situation. We have that kind of hope that is certain will happen. Third one is this. We can find true and lasting hope in the promises of God. He has promises for us day in and day out. In fact, He has promises, uh, uh, promises for us Today, he gives us promises for today. Isaiah 43. I like this passage. Because we go through some murky stuff in our lives, don't we? Life gets all messed up and we go, man, I don't know how I'm going to get through this one. Isaiah says, when you pass through the rivers, this is God speaking through Isaiah, when you pass through the waters, 
What does it say? Do you believe that? It's hard to believe sometimes. When we're going through the, the, the stuff of life, it's hard to f- know that God is really present. But that God, that's what God is saying. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. That's a promise from God. When you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. For I love this. God gives a description of himself right here. I am the Lord. I am your God. I am the Holy One of Israel, and I am your Savior. Isn't that amazing? He lifts us up out of this deep, murky waters, and He says, you know what? I'm here for you. You have this kind of assurance in me. You can hope in me. I I am here for you day in and day out. This is the promise for today. When you wake up in the morning, God says, I am with you. I am with you throughout this whole day. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you, God says. I am with you. You might think you're treading through some deep waters and you're, you're going under for the last time. You might think you're going through the flames, uh, through the fire right now. Things are just heating up all the more. God promises that he will be with you no matter what. But you, do you see, we still go through the junk in life, don't we? He doesn't promise to take all that away while we're living on this earth. We still have to go through these bad things in life. The difference you and I have in Christ is that he is with us today. Even in the darkest and deep, uh, deepest and darkest days, God will never leave you. God gives us promise also for tomorrow. I like that because that really gives us hope for the future. In John 16, 33, Jesus says, I have told you these things. Here it is. So, the, so you may have peace. He says, in this world, you're going to have trouble. It's going to get bad. You're going to have to go through some trials and tribulations and sufferings. And he says, but take heart. I have overcome the world. What a promise. What a promise. When it comes down to it, Christians, we followers of Jesus Christ, have hope because we know that matter, whatever happens to us in this world, it doesn't ultimately matter in the grand scheme of things. In the grand scheme of things, I'm going to a better place. That's the hope we have in Jesus Christ because Jesus has overcome the world. We understand that though we may have troubles and trials and sufferings in this world, there will be a day when all of these things will have passed away. Are you excited about that? I am. I can't wait to get there. Therein really lies our true and lasting hope. John writes, I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Now the dwelling of God is with men, and He will live with them. They will be His people, and God Himself will be with them and be their God. He will, here's the great promise, He will wipe every tear from our eyes. There won't be any more death or mourning, or crying, or pain, or cancer, or diabetes, or anything else in this world that is bringing you down. It will all disappear, and we will live eternally in the glorious uh, 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 presence of our Father and His Son, Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen? Wow, I don't know if you guys are with me today. We have a hope in Jesus Christ, and that's where it is. That's where it is. Not here. This place is terrible. I hate it. But my hope is there. My hope is there. Hebrews 6.19, this hope is a strong and trustworthy anchor for our souls. A strong and trustworthy anchor for our souls. And because we have this hope of, uh, as an anchor for our souls, it changes everything. While we're here on this earth, it changes everything. This confident hope changes, first of all, what we think. We have a different mindset now. Psalm 33, we we wait and hope for the Lord. He is our help and shield. He is, not anything else. In Him our hearts rejoice, for we trust in His holy name. May, May your unfailing love rest on us, O Lord, even as we put our hope in You. Without hope in our lives, the only thing that's that that we see is what's in front of us today. If you don't have this hope in God, if you don't have this hope in the Lord Jesus Christ, here's what remains in front of you then, and that is success, money, houses, family, health, sports teams, and so on and so forth. When those things 
go pretty well, we're pretty excited about that. We can have a little bit of hope. We can be positive about life. But when those things fail us, what's left? We have nothing. But the confident hope that we have in Jesus Christ keeps us looking ahead and rejoicing in what God is about to do in our lives. Isn't that amazing? So our mindsets can change. No matter what's going on here, I can think, you know what? God's got this. He's with me. This confident hope changes also how we act. Now our behaviors start to change because our mindset is different. What, how you think is what you do, right? How you think is what you say, what you do, everything else. What's in here comes out. It's, it's displayed for all to see. Psalm 146, do not put your trust in princes, in mortal men who cannot save. When their spirit departs, they return to the ground. On that very day, their plans come to nothing. Blessed is he whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord his God, the maker of heaven and earth, the sea, and everything in them, the Lord who remains faithful forever. That's amazing. Barack Obama ran on the message of hope. Remember that? Eight years ago. (laughs) I can still see the signs in my head. Hope. Hope. Now at the end of his presidency, I wonder how many Americans have any hope left. Where's all the hope? If you're hoping that government is going to change your situation, if you're hoping that money is going to change your situation, or power or fame is going to change your situation, I want to tell you, don't hold your breath. Don't hold your breath. (laughs) Now we're looking at at a presidential election this year. Anybody hopeful? Okay, that's zero. (laughs) Man, where are we going? If you're going to put your hope in these things, you're going to be disappointed no matter what. No matter what. And so your behavior is going to be different. But if you hope in the Lord Jesus Christ, your, your behavior is going to be so different than the world's behaviors. It's not going to matter to you. All of these things in this earth and this life, it's all either going to dwindle away or it's going to die. Then what? But if you follow Jesus, you don't have to worry about it. You don't have to put your hope in people and plans and prosperity of this earth. If you follow Jesus, you can be joyful in knowing what God is going to do, and that changes your behavior. All these temporary problems will not affect the final outcome. Jesus is still going to come to earth, and Jesus is going to take us to be to heaven with him, and evil will be conquered, and we will live triumphantly forever in heaven with God. Nothing can change the person, power, or promise of God. Finally, this hope changes who we are. It changes who we are. We become different people. Our identity then is in Jesus Christ. Not in our jobs, not in our fortunes, not in anything else. Our identity is in Jesus Christ. Psalm 31, 24, Be strong and take heart, all you who hope in the Lord. Here's our identity. We can be strong and courageous. Because our hope is anchored in who God is. So we can be strong and courageous. How we are, who we are in in the middle of the storms in our lives, we can be so strong and courageous because of who God is and what he's doing in our lives. Though the world shakes around us, we can remain unshakable. How strong is your hope in the Lord today? I hope it's a lot stronger than, than it was when you first came in. I found something pretty interesting in my studies this week. Do you know that throughout the first four centuries in the early days of the church, do you know that the cross was not the symbol for Christianity? It wasn't until about 400 A.D. that the cross really came in on the scene. And you got to think about what was going on during the, the Roman Empire period, especially throughout the first century. Christians were thrown into the lions, were thrown to the lions for entertainment purposes in arenas. Christians were burned at the stake. Christians were beheaded. Christians were crucified on a cross. Christians were sawed in two. All these bad things happened because the Romans did what Christianity has spread. And surprisingly, as the Christians were going through all of this, surprisingly, they didn't look at a cross and say, okay, we have hope. Isn't that amazing? They didn't, they didn't look at the cross, and, 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 and through their uh, horrible persecution, they didn't find hope there. The cross in their days 
was a symbol of shameful death. It was a shameful death. The cross, we, we, why don't we put an electric chair up there? That's what it was like back then. None of you would think about hanging an electric chair in your living rooms. That'd be crazy. You wouldn't wear one around your neck, would you? That's how the cross was, at least through the first four centuries. Christians throughout the first four centuries held to this symbol that we find in Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 19. This hope is a strong and trustworthy anchor. Anchor for our souls. It's interesting, if you do some research, archaeologists, they dig up old Christian graves from the first century, second century, third century, and, and you know they find the anchor on their tombstones. They go down into the catacombs where Christians had to hide to worship God, and they find markings, not of a cross, but of an anchor. <laughs> what, I, what I found also is that they even put it on their coins, on their money, the anchor, not the cross. I think we've got our symbols mixed up. I think it would be great if I came in next week and saw an anchor hanging here instead of a cross. So when you came in this morning, hopefully every one of you got an anchor now. And I want you to take this anchor and I want you to put it in a place that will remind you of the hope that you have in Jesus Christ. You can put it on a necklace, wear it around your neck. You could, I'm, I think I'm going to put mine on my keychain. Put it on a piece of string, hang it from your rear view mirror. I don't care what you do with it. But anytime you start to go through a storm in life, grab that anchor and say, you know what? My anchor is in Jesus Christ. Sure, safe, secure, and steady. I'm not going anywhere. I'm not going to let the storms of this life ruin me because I have an anchor for my soul in Jesus Christ.